Now we have um, another session, which is the Wiki Women Open Discussion, Language, Diversity, and Gender, to be led by Tila Capoletto, who is online, and Masana. Thank you so much, Fanj. And um, we are incredibly efficient with some time to spare. So we have more time for discussion. Thank you so much to our panelists for making space for everyone to participate. Uh, Chila, for colleagues who are online, nice to see you. Thank you so much, Rosie. I was actually going to run so that you can be comfortable. Uh, Chila is in the chat room answering questions. I've been told that we will have a summary of questions pulled up on the screen. And whilst we're getting our summary of questions from online, sure. we would love to hear from you, all of you. Everybody has to say something at least once today. <laughs> Any thoughts and reflections on the presentations, questions for our panelists, for our wonderful organizing team, reflections on Wiki Women Summit? Yay! I did have a question about the speedy deletion process. How actually easy is it when you get a situation like that to get images speedy deleted from Wiki Commons? I mean, obviously it's very important to happen if someone wants their image speedy deleted, certainly in a situation like that. And I'm just wondering whether the processes make it easy for you to do that. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any? Yeah, uh, Sanchan and Mariana, can we turn to you for that question? And can folks raise their hands? We're, Rosie and I are just gonna move through the room and make eye contact with people to get participation. How quick is the speedy deletion process in your experience? Um, well, not as quick as we were would want it to be but we have um we have a resource on how to you know um request or ask for speedy deletion i think it also helps to know some people um and i think that we are happy to like share what like that protocol and like the link to to that process is but we wish it was um much uh, quicker sometimes it could take could take hours could take days depending on on what you want um to be deleted but we do have um, like a resource that we can share. Thank you. That would be fantastic. And I definitely confirm that we have had experiences of people not even knowing who to ask. Um, and I think that's one of the ways in which we can build up safeguarding in our movement, which is how do we make it easy for women and non-binary people to find information when they need help? And how do we build up a body of volunteers and WMF staff who can step in to support speedy deletion? But it is a gap. And uh, Mariana and Sunshine, if I could ask you to email that to me and I can post that on the Twitter page. More questions, more comments, more inspiration. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I, have so, I have a lot of concern regarding tools. Um, I was reading a research about women. I think one of the community did a research about women and they were um, talking about how women find the interface of Wikimedia projects unfriendly. It's like, it's, it's something that we don't like to do, but amazingly, there are tools that have been created. When you go to Toolforge, you see a lot of tools. But I was wondering, I was still looking for a tool that can help me to edit about women. Because you could have tools that enables you to edit about particular topics, let's say um, history, maybe this country, monuments like specific things, but I was looking for women, I wasn't finding it. So I'm wondering, um, I'm, I'm not a developer, I don't develop tools, but as a Wikimedia um, movement here, we are concerned about women. How are we trying to make maybe like work with this developer community to develop those kind of tools that can help us to edit about women, yeah. I can start answering the question and then we'll have someone continue. Um, the community called Women in Red has a resources center where there aren't what I would call tools, so I need someone to answer that, but there are essays regarding specifically things one might do when editing um, 
articles representative about women. So it's not only their biographies, but also information about women's works, broadly construed, women's issues, broadly construed. It's not a tool, but it's information as to um, things you should be aware of, frequently asked questions, tips and tricks, things like that. Hello. Um, I'm really impressed about the work that they presented uh, from Wiki, Visible Women, uh, by whose knowledge. Um, we have this project called Gender and Cultural Diversity on Commons by Art and Feminism, and we are trying to understand the diversity of Wikimedia Commons files on Commons. And we are currently working to build like a tool that will help us annotate random images to see how uh, diversified images are. We, all, we already know about the gender gap on Wikipedia, but we don't know how it is on Wikimedia Commons. So we are currently at the early stage of the research, and I'm really curious to, understand, to know like, how you are working with tools like um, Ruby mentioned. Do you have any tool that you are currently working with in terms of your work? How do you identify random images? to be able to understand what exactly they represent on Wikimedia Commons as part of your work at Visible Women, or whose knowledge. Um, we are also calling on you know, people who are interested in exploring or want to know about how um, we can you know, help identify uh, this diversity or cultural and gender diversity on Wikimedia Commons. So we invited people to help us annotate random images and who will be happy to learn more about what is working with other communities and how they've been able to navigate around these challenges to, to identify all these um, diversity and gen cultural diversity on Wikimedia Commons. So I'm just using this as an opportunity to invite people who are interested in exploring with us. And also, if you have any idea about how you can help us, you know, um, discover these uh, findings and that will be very, very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. It's very interesting. Uh, we don't have a, any specific tool and so we need to, to talk and, and figure out together and, and plan it together. Um, uh, we know uh, we are exploring the um, uh, the tool called ISA ISA. Many of you know. Uh, I think that Wikilobs uh, women have been using that tool uh, for a um, long time now, and it's a tool for that you select a category on Commons, and then there is like a game. Uh, you see images, and you can. Uh, add descriptions, captions, uh, wiki data, I, structured data items, and uh, we, we, we really want to organize something like a data fest or data of feminist data ton or something like that for doing that exactly. Uh, so maybe we can speak and organize something together uh, around that. Uh, but in terms of um, the, our analysis, uh, on diversity for uh, until now is not an analysis based on quantitative research. It's, we have also observations, we document what we see and we try to uh, speak about that, analyze that, uh, but we, we, want, we really want to develop maybe including quant qualitative methods for Having for analyzing the images, annotate um, uh, uh, with a more with a feminist lens, right? The images. So that's the work we, we are doing so far. We are far, but maybe we can do things together around that. We have some questions online. Yes, uh, I will read them. We colleagues online, uh, Chile is there and copying and pasting your questions for us to be able to read them. So please feel free to engage in that space. Uh, the first one is from Ainali. In my opinion, the automatic image recognition should just be disabled as it often suggests two generic tags. 
it's not so much a question, but a reflection on, of the ongoing discussion on Commons talk structured data. So thank you for that reflection. Um, any of our panelists or anyone else in the audience have a reflection on the generic uploads or related? No? Also curious regarding the first session that um, we heard Clifford and Colleen and Christine um, speak about regarding the uh, use of maybe ChatGPT to help with the work on Wikipedia. Does anyone else have that experience? And if so, how's that been for you? Is anyone trying to use ChatGPT or what? A, ah, we have one here. Uh, Neta, then you. Yeah. And can we just ask colleagues to stand and introduce themselves for our participants online, if you're comfortable? Hi, um, my name is William and I'm from the United States. And uh, on the topic of using uh, ChatGPT in work with Wikipedia, this is something that, that I have tested out on, on several occasions to try and figure out like how can we use this uh, and like what can this do mainly because the best way to figure out what something can do is to push against the limits of it and try to figure out and try to figure out how does it react to these situations and I've often found that like a lot of people when thinking about <laughs> yeah, chat GPT as, as it is with Wikipedia would <laughs> simply think about can we just use this to automatically generate articles and well, to that, the answer is yes, but with a lot of asterisks because it can either make stuff up or include in making up citations. So that's something that one has to think about. However, something that I've uh, wanted to bring up here is the potential of using it for applications beyond just, uh, just generating articles by itself. Like, for example, can you use it to find problems with articles or, or suggest improvements for articles? The first session in here earlier today kind of, kind of touched on that a little by discussing, by discussing can we use it to address biases, for example. And also, if you connect ChatGPT with, with, or other language models with the internet, and uh, can you use these to find sources for, for topics? So I guess the main thing to think about here is what are the possible applications beyond just uh, generating articles by itself? And obviously, and obviously we can, if we use these for these purposes, we can find a lot of benefits to uh, the incorporation of AI tools. Thank you, William Netta. Just adding on to what you said. Um, for me, the main interest in using ChatGPT was to find the knowledge gaps in existing Wikipedia articles, particularly in women's health. So what I did was I copied the whole text of the article, put it up on ChatGPT, and asked ChatGPT what was missing in that article. And it was sometimes quite good in finding out, saying that, look, it, uh, it doesn't say anything about the clinical implications of this condition, or it doesn't say about the anatomy of this particular organ. So there were some points which I could always take from ChatGPT and try and think about it and incorporate into, into that article. Uh, but on the other hand, when I tried to make ChatGPT write a full article about a particular anatomical structure or a particular disease, it was quite incomplete. It was always hallucinating, and it just brought up a lot of, you know, made up citations from different things. I mean, there were so many things which did not exist in real life, but ChatGPT was just using it. So I think it's useful when it comes to, you know, if you want to rephrase some sentences, you have got a particular text from a particular journal article, which you want to rephrase into popular science or, you know, a language that people can, most people can understand. In that case, ChatGPT is quite good at rephrasing your sentences, but to create knowledge, I think you always have to use your discretion and figure out 
if this is true before you actually put that up on uh, Wikipedia. So I think the future where ChatGPT generates articles automatically, it's quite, quite far. I don't know if we'll ever reach there, but can ChatGPT assist humans to make articles mo have more quality? Yes, I think that is possible. Uh, hello. And I, 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 yeah, come come to think of it, I should submit a topic about ChatGPT here. Okay, and I think I, I think it's there are a couple of points that's very quite interesting about chat, using ChatGPT about this. One point is I call it about I I call it a design political correct design political correct. That means that. Last time, for example, I asked him, I asked Chad Bidi about and to, to discuss about the Disney movie Little Mermaid using a black woman as a leading leading actress, and say, and its answer is so <laughs> pleasing that out then all almost everything, almost eighty percent of things that you saw on the internet, yeah. So that's why I call it. It has something built in us, don't not be evil. So it, it has something I said that design political correct. I think that is very quite interesting. That is quite good because if you are using it as a tool for students to learn something and to, for some, and, and that is one thing. And the other thing is that I try to use it when to translate, to, to translate the article from English to to translate Wikipedia article from English to Chinese, and along with, along with Google Translate, and it works well. And I think it's 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 good to be two. There are two copies of translation that you can compare them. And but charity and another benefit is that if you, if you don't understand the translation, you can still ask it about to explain it. Yeah, and you can still ask it to it. And there's a there's a trick here is that. Because ChatGPT train in different train different language with different texts. So if you ask, so you if you ask ask the same question in English or in Chinese or in different in French, it may get you different answer. Yeah, then that that is some that is a little trick you must consider. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Any yes. Hi, please. My name is Ruby from Ghana, and I'm part of the Open Foundation West Africa community. I'm very interested. I, I wanted to ask a follow-up question regarding what she's saying, that if you ask ChatGTP in a different language, it gives you different responses. That Could it be that it picks um, references from that language category? Or I, I just wanted to understand, like, the disparities. Yeah. Yeah, the the questions we ask just TTP. You said it changes when you ask it in different languages. And why, and why is that? Yeah. Uh, because you actually try to really learn from a lot of public text. Yeah, try to really learn from. A lot. Actually, actually, I'm not quite. I'm not one hundred percent correct because every time you ask Chubby, you give you a different answer. Okay, so so even if you ask it in English twice, it will give you two, two different English that twice answer. Last time I asked it about a question about transgender women, and next time I want to copy it and ask it again, well, I cannot find the original answer. It's a generating machine. It generates an answer for you. So you don't have a standard answer there. But the, but, the difference of different language is because it learned from the different language. When it that is is caused by the source that you learn. If you in in English, you learn from the English text, English content, all the free English text in the world. But in Chinese, then it learn from all the different language, free Chinese in the world, and. There's a cultural difference between the free Chinese text and free English text, so you get free, you get different results. That's sometimes because because I'm a software developer, 
And so sometimes I cannot get result in Chinese because most of the recent documents are, recent document, changing documents are in English. So I cannot get result in Chinese. And that is, yeah, I don't know if that, does that answer your question? Great, we have about a minute left for any final reflections. Ah. Hi, I'm Natalia. And I was sitting here and thinking that in 2011, I was in Gdańsk and Wikimedia, and we had a Wikimoman lunch, one of the first one. And it was such a small group of us, and we, was, and we were kind of shy about it. Is, it. is it okay that we take this space, that we do it? And I remember the conversations were actually about how can we create a space which, with more diversity in this movement? And I'm sitting here at the Wiki Women Summit, and I'm a bit emotional because we kind of have this space already. We're not talking about can we have a diverse space in this movement? We have it. We celebrate it. And I'm listening to the sessions thinking that we are in a, such a different place because right now we are experimenting with how can we build diversity in many different ways through data, through images, through languages. And it's, isn't it fantastic that we actually got here? It's like absolutely amazing. So. Just a last, um I wanted to recommend especially those um, random contests in uh, like Wikimedia Commons contest. I would strongly recommend that we um, describe images in our languages, like local languages, especially when you are uploading images about women. Uh, yeah, most of the times we just put the in, uh, descriptions in English without putting the description in other languages. I think it helps a lot. Uh, I, one of the examples I found was uh, Dagbani. I was looking for the name of something in Dagbani. Uh, I don't know the Dagbani name, but I just typed it in English. And then it brought the image because there was a description of that, which has um, an image, um, the description in English and Dagbani. So I was able to see the picture and I could find the, the, the real name of that particular file in my language. So for somebody who liked to work with language communities, I would strongly recommend that uh, we try to include these uh, descriptions in various languages, not just English. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to take a short coffee break now. There's coffee service for us in the main concourse, in the main concourse where you got your name badges and come back after, 15 you have 15 minutes, so that's at a quarter till, and see you at a quarter till. Uh, one moment, yeah. Kel Kelsey. Kelsey, I thought Kelsey was saying something. Kelsey was making a motion. Okay, she says it's okay. Okay, thank you. See you at a quarter till.